Good day and welcome to your favorite program, Leaders Live, just designed for pastors, leaders of churches, those who are preaching the gospel, those who are in the ministry. It's a wonderful time that we can together go into the Word of God and be encouraged, be blessed by the Holy Spirit who teaches us all things. I think also it's good to understand that as we go into the scriptures, we need to be able to open our hearts. If the Holy Spirit directs us, shows us things that we do not do the right way, it's wonderful for us to humble ourselves and be ready to change. Amen? Why? Because we are supposed to exercise the ministry according to God's word. Not maybe to the things that we have learned or we have seen, we have heard, but it's important in the days that we are living to come to the word of God with an heart and a, an attitude of submission and obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Submission to the word of God, which is the total truth. Amen? Man can speak, but the word of God comes from the mouth of God, the heart of God. Amen. So it's important for us as we come to these sessions and we are ready to hear the word of God, we have that type of attitude, ready to adjust, to change whatever the Holy Spirit shows us in the word of God, we must be ready. Amen. So this being said, uh, I have been sharing with you about the five ministries of authority in the past few weeks. And um, I think it's been challenging and good. What we have heard, it has edified us, brought some more light. And today I will continue in this theme of ministry. But I will be talking about the elders of the church. The elders of the church. Who is an elder? What is his responsibility? What heart does he have to carry? And all, all these little questions that we may have, I believe that the Holy Spirit will bring some light in all that we are going to share with you. All right. There are many references in the Bible concerning elders. We can see that even from the Old Testament. In the Old Covenant, there were also elders present among the people of Israel. And I'm not going to go in details when I speak of elders of the Old Covenant, but I will give you some references and mention them, but you will be able to go and read them by yourself and see how these elders had great authority in the ministry that they had. The first scripture I can read we can, we can see, you can see yourself, is in Exodus chapter 3, verse 16. And we can see Exodus chapter 4, verse 29 and 30. The elders were those who will report to the people of God what God would have said to Moses, not every time Moses spoke to the people directly, but in some circumstances, Moses spoke to the elders who in turn would report what Moses have heard for what he had to do. 
So the elders were there and they had that responsibility. They were there to bring to the people of God the instructions that Moses received from God, from God Almighty. He gave instructions to Moses and many times Moses asked them to report these instructions to the people of God. He won't, he, he will, Moses would not ask anyone, he would ask the elders of the church. They were elders, not the church, but uh, among the people of Israel. And we see also in Exodus chapter 7, verse 5, God said to Moses, take the elders with you. When they went to the, to, to the rock of Oreb, when God needed to bring water out of the rock. So the elders were present with Moses. And even in Leviticus chapter 4, uh, when, the, when they had to do the sin offering, where the people of Israel had, uh, well, uh, disobeyed the law, so there was what they called the sin offering, and the elders of the church were called to lay hands on the animal which would be sacrificed before the sin that they had done. So the elders would lay their hands on the head of the animal be like a transfer of sin, of their sin, to the animal who would be sacrificed and, blood would, and the blood of the animal would be shed. That was the way they did the, the sin offering. And also in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9, when Moses was ready to die, he instructed the elders of the church to really, during his absence, not to fail to remind the people of God of the law and the ordinances that God had given to the people of Israel. So the elders had that responsibility after the death of Moses. In 1 King chapter 8, verse 1, King Solomon assembled the elders of the church and asked them to carry the ark to the temple in Zion. So we see that the elders were present in many important decisions and circumstances in the Old Covenant. Even David made a covenant with the elders of Israel when he was anointed to be king. You will see that in 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 1 to 3. So, I would stop there concerning the Old Covenant covenant, the presence of elders in the old covenant, but I will take more time as from now to speak about the elders of the new covenant, the new testament. Amen. The church of the new testament. An elder, by definition, if we look at different scriptures, is like a bishop. Hmm. A bishop. He is the one who watches, looks, take care of the people of God. He is like a shepherd. He watches, directs, give counsel, lead. That's the role and the responsibility of the shepherd. And an elder is a shepherd. Amen? He's the one called by God, called by the Lord Jesus Christ, qualified by the Holy Spirit, who has given them the responsibility to take care of the spiritual, mainly of the spiritual condition of the people of God. That was their main responsibility, watch over God's people, take care of them, look after them, make sure that they've got the right food, that the responsibility is to bring them to maturity, care for them, shepherd the flock. 
Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles in Acts chapter 20, where we see their responsibility. Acts chapter 20. Amen. Now Paul was, had called the elders of Ephesus to come and meet him in Mile, Miletus. And he had to speak to them. And this is what he said to them in verse 28. Therefore, he had called the elders. Okay, let's read it just to be sure that this is the right thing. Verse 17. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church to come and meet with them in Miletus. Right, they had come there. And one of the things that he said to them in verse 28, he said, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseas, overseers, or bishop, or elder, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Amen? So it's the shepherd who watches and takes care of the flock. Amen? So the elders had come to him. They were elders. And they are here. The Holy Spirit mentions the word shepherd. Shepherding the flock. As an elder. As an officer. As a bishop. It's the same thing. Amen. That's why in the church today there is a big, how do you call that, desire for men to become bishop, but the bishop is just an elder, according to scripture. Okay, so what is the responsibility here? Take heed to the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. A bishop, an elder, to do what? To shepherd the, the church, to shepherd the flock. The people of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So that was the main responsibility of an elder, of an overseer, of a bishop, of a shepherd, or whatever you want to call it. There's no difference at all. They are called to give their lives for the people of God. Watch after them. Feed them. Amen? Amen. It's their responsibility that has been given by the Lord himself. That's why an elder is accountable to God. Because it's God, it's the Jesus who has called him in that particular ministry or responsibility. Watch, look, feed Whatever you can call it, be the guardian, the bishop, the overseer, whatever. 1 Peter chapter 5. This is my scripture that I love concerning elders of the church. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Paul is, part, excuse me, Peter is speaking here to the elders of the church who are supposed, who are called to shepherd the flock. Here he says, verse 2, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you. Take care. Serving as overseers, again, not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. An elder who reads this verse, I'm sure realizes 
the great responsibility that he has. To look and watch and shepherd the people of God. How accountab accountable he must be towards the Lord. How serious is this ministry? Because you are taking care of people that do not belong to you, but were, you were given the charge to look and watch and shepherd them. They who belong to Jesus. He is the main shepherd. He is the head. He owns the church. It says it's my church. So these people are not, do not belong and are not the property of elders of the church. And they must be very careful because this verse describes not only the responsibility but an attitude where they give their lives. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving, being a servant. Amen. A servant. It's amazing how people have got an idea that when you become a sh an elder or a shepherd or an overseer or, or a bishop or whatever you can call it, you know, you, you become... The men. And people have got to serve you. But here we see that Peter. Addressing the elders of the church. And telling them. You are serving as overseers. You are serving as overseers. And do not do it by compulsion. But willingly. Willingly, with your own heart. Loving the people of God to the point that you are ready to give their lives for them. Loving them. Taking care of them. Desiring the best for them. And to walk and to work in the spirit. And not to get emotionally tied up with the people of God. But it's a serious ministry given by the Lord to take care of his people that belong to him. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Not by compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Not nor as being lords over those entrusted to you. You see, this couple of scriptures show that the Lord has entrusted to the elders his people. He has given them the responsibility to look and watch and care for them. His people. Amen. So it's not ours. It belongs to Jesus. And he gives, that, gives us that responsibility that honor to watch and look and care for the people of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 3. Chapter 3. Chapter 13. <laughs> chapter 13, verse 17. Here we go. Now, the author of the book of Hebrews talks about the people of God, their attitude towards the elders. He says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. Watch. They watch. Amen. They watch out for your souls. 
They are eager to see the people of God grow and be well and be established. So in this verse, we see that the elders, they watch over the people of God. They look after them with diligence. Watch over their spiritual state. Make sure that they have spiritual food. Make sure that they are growing spiritually. Amen. That's the responsibility of the elders. To watch over God's people and to see that they are growing Their lives are changing. They are growing in maturity, spiritual maturity. They are being established in Christ. Established in Christ. Very important. Very, very, very important. So we see the, their responsibility before God. Their attitude. How they must direct guide, exhort, teach the people of God in a good spirit, not lording over them, willingly, with their whole heart, understanding the depth of that responsibility before God, not taking it lightly, but giving their lives giving their lives for the people of God, going out of their comfort zone. Be ready at all times. Hmm. And how they were not just manipulating God's people with their own carnal authority, but being careful And knowing that these people don't belong to them, but belong to God. And in 1 Peter, we have seen, chapter 5, that they need to become examples. Models. <laughs> models. The one that walked before. For the others to follow. And they are keen to follow. Because they feel that these elders... Uh, showing them the way and leading them in the right direction. Their lives speak for themselves. So there's a, a depth in that ministry. And we must not take it lightly. Many want to be elders in the church without realizing the responsibility, the depth of that ministry, that calling, And how profound it is taking charge, taking care, watch, feeding the people of God. Those who belong to Christ who have been saved by the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And one thing that is important that I want to just share with you before we close. We've got about four, three, four minutes to go. And uh, it's for you to understand that, let's read in Peter 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, for us to understand before we go further that fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are also elders of the church. They form part of the body of elders of the church. Amen. Peter, in verse 1, chapter 5, he says, The elders who are among you, I exhort you, I who am a fellow elder. So Peter considers himself to be an elder also. But he's an apostle. So we must, we must be clear. And accept that 
an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, or fivefold ministry are also elders of the church, form part of the body of elders to guide, to direct, and to lead, and to take decisions. They all form part of that body of elders. Amen? So let's look in Acts chapter 15, quickly. Acts chapter 15, verse 2. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So Paul and Barnabas didn't go to the apostles only, but he goes to the apostles who are themselves elders, as we have seen, and the elders of the church. So they are some elders who are part of fivefold ministry, ministry of authority, and there are other elders who are not part of that ministry of authority, but are there to love the people of God, care for them, direct them, look after them, watch after them, as we have seen. Amen? So we have these two categories of elders. Some of them will never come to the place of being an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher, but will remain elders of the church to take care, and as I shared with you earlier on, that must be clear. Amen? So apostles and prophets are elders of the church. Amen? And working with the other elders, that's why Paul and Barnabas went to the apostles and the elders of the church. And in verse 6, you will see the same thing in verse 6, where it says, Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Very clear. Amen? So, let us not be deceived. Let us not go astray. Let us not think another way. Let us come back to the word of God. Amen? So everything says here that fivefold ministry are elders of the church and working with the other elders who are not in the fivefold ministry. And you will see that in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. I just read the scripture and we close. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders who rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Amen? That makes the difference between the two types of elders. Fivefold ministry and elders who are not in the fivefold ministry. And those who are in fivefold ministry must be looked at with having double honor. Why? Because they preach the word of God and they preach the doctrine of Christ. Amen. They labor in the word and doctrine. So let's close here today. And I trust that you will be enlightened. And until we see each other next time, God bless you. And never forget that we love you. Amen. <laughs>